In the depths of the sky wanders light Silent in its journey through the endless night Welcome to Comet Chasing, where we chronicle the fuzzy wanderers of our solar system with a focus on seeing them for yourself. What? Well, last month, this is where you jumped in with a new comet discovery. I got nothing. Okay, then. Well, let's start by bringing everyone up to date on that late breaking comet discovery from last month. As you know, around here, we're not big on blaming comets for fizzling out. We know that it's often unrealistic expectations that are the real problem. But in the case of Comet C 2025F2, SWAN, it really did fizzle out. We knew that was a possibility going in because it was pretty faint and small. After discovery in SWAN images, it brightened rapidly and was reported at magnitude 9.5 on April 4th. But after April 12th, it began to fade, which in hindsight marked the beginning of its disintegration. Somewhere between April 20th and 25th, it disintegrated, leaving a fading comet ghost. 2024 G3 Atlas suffered the same fate, although we got a really good show before it when poof in late January. The crazy thing is that it left so much dust in the space around it that the very faint tail is still detectable in long exposure images months later. Look out, because some poor sources of information, like Google AI, erroneously claim it can still be observed without a stack of long exposures. Looking over the comet chasing page, I see only a single comet listed. I don't think that's ever happened before. Yeah, it's unprecedented. Greg says that it's the slowest month he's seen since he started the page 20 years ago. Some of that is due to changes in his algorithm, but it's mostly real. There just aren't a lot of bright telescopic comets right now. I've wondered about that, though. I look at the comets listed this month, and there are plenty that seem bright. I mean, 29P is reported to be 12th magnitude. 2023A3 is 14.7. I can spot 15th magnitude stars pretty easily in my telescope, so why can't I see that comet? And not only that, but 29P is brighter than the one comet listed for viewing this month. So why isn't it on the list? Is it too close to the sun or something? Nope. 29P is in fact well-placed for observation. So what's going on then? Here's a recent image of 29P. There's a bright spot near the center, but it's also surrounded by this big fuzzy coma. A lot of the total light is in that coma, and it's hard to spot, especially if there is any light pollution. In fact, because comets are fuzzier than stars, we can't usually detect a comet of the same magnitude or brightness as that of a nearby star. The magnitude is measured as the total amount of light. Some comets have large comas that spread the light out more than others. Within that coma, most of the light may be concentrated toward the center, or it may be spread more evenly. If it's concentrated, then like a star, you can see it a lot more easily. If it's spread evenly over a large area, it's much harder, and light pollution will affect your ability to see it more than if it was star-like. So how do we know if we can see a comet in the telescope? Well, Greg, the astronomer behind this channel, developed an algorithm for his SkyTools software. That's the only way I know of to know if you can see a comet with any sort of reliability. I mean, there are tons of websites and apps for your phone that will tell you where a comet is and what its magnitude is, but they can't tell you how big your telescope needs to be to see it. For that, you need to use the comet chasing page, or better yet, SkyTools itself. The basic idea is this. There are two measurements that are reported along with the magnitude of a comet, the size of the coma, and its degree of condensation, or DC. The DC is a number that tells you how concentrated the light is. Greg developed an algorithm that uses the magnitude, size, and DC to predict the contrast between the comet and the sky background. The contrast determines how easily you can spot a comet or whether or not you can see it at all. Okay, but we know Greg lives on top of a 9,000-foot mountain in New Mexico with little light pollution. Surely he can see fainter comets in an 8-inch telescope than I can in my suburban backyard. Yeah, well, that's true. But the SkyTools algorithm can take that all into account. If you have SkyTools, you can put in your own elevation, light pollution, and telescope, and the predictions will be tailored just for you. But for this channel and the web page, we have to adopt a typical location and our predictions are for that. Thankfully, 
for those brighter comets that live near the sun and are seen in twilight, light pollution doesn't matter as much because the sky is already bright from twilight. But for telescopic comets, it does matter. That's why you'll see us list the telescope you'd need at both our typical location and for a dark site. So what is this typical location? It's basically beyond the edge of town, away from the city center, maybe in the suburbs, but away from nearby street lighting. It's close to a Bortle scale five, for those who are familiar with that scale. We picked it because most people should be able to drive to such a location without going all the way to a dark sky site. The other variable is how transparent your sky is. We're assuming it's a typical night. If the sky is the best you've seen in a long time, it'll be easier to see the comet. And if it's pretty bad, you may have trouble spotting it. Well, I'm glad I don't have to be on a mountain in New Mexico. Are you sure about that? Well, okay, come to think of it, that would be pretty cool. So what have we got going this month? The one comet is C2021 G2 Atlas. It's magnitude 13.9, but its coma is fairly small, about 1.1 arc minutes, with a diffuse condensation at the center. For comparison, 29P is brighter, but is reported to be three times bigger. That's why it's harder to see. 2021 G2 is moving slowly from Serpent's Caput into Libra this month. You're going to need an 18-inch telescope and a dark sky sight to see it. Whoa, so I really will have to go hang out with Greg on his mountain then. Yeah, it's not a great month for comets, at least so far, but you never know. New comets are discovered all the time. For those who can spot it, the best nights will be May 1st through the 19th, as seen from the Northern Hemisphere. For observers near 30 degrees south latitude, it will be best visible until the 8th, and again from the 17th through the end of the month. Well, that's all we got. We'll let you know if any news breaks. Otherwise, we'll see you all next month.